Alrighty, this video is all about multiple regression. Couple things to review. Make sure that you understand all of these. Pause, go over it, and then we're gonna move on. The level of measurement for regression is very, very, very important. Everything is continuous, period. It has to be. So if you are using a categorical variable, we need to do a thing called dummy coding. And essentially it makes it everything, it makes that variable zero and one. The whole point of this is because we are using means. So we're using the average of all of these variables. So we can't take an average of minority. We can't take an average of gender. That doesn't necessarily make any sense. But if we change it to zero and one, then I can now take an average of these and make sense of it. So if male is zero and female is one, and I have a mean of 0.5, then I know that they are directly even. This gets a little bit confusing. So if I have the big four ethnicities, I have all of my data listed out here. I can code it one, two, three, four, five, and then code everything down from there. So black is one, Hispanic is two, white is three, all the way down. I can't take a mean of this. If I have a mean of 3.5, I don't know what that means. So one popular way that this is done in research is to code it minority or not minority. And so if they are minority, they are a one. If they are not a minority, then they are a zero. If though I want to look at each one as a predictor, so is Hispanic, being Hispanic a predictor of something, then I can code them all very differently. I can code Hispanic, yes or no, black, yes or no, Asian, yes or no, and all the way down. Your data must be coded like this before you can use a categorical variable. All right, multiple regression. So we are now taking beta zero, beta one, and we are adding predictors. So this is predictor two, beta two, predictor three, they'll have beta three and as many as we want. Um, I had a researcher do up to 50 and it still ran. The interpretation was a nightmare, good luck. Why would we want more than one predictor? Um, it does a better job. <laughs> so if we are trying to predict this green circle and I use one blue circle, then I am predicting this much of the green. That's not a lot. But if I add another predictor, I'm now predicting even more of this green circle. So more predictors are explaining more of why. Our equation can be written two ways. Y hat assumes that there is error, but we're just not including it over here. Or Y, we need to add this positive E. We never add a value for E, so we'll add values for all the betas. Um, this just acknowledges that there is error. All of the assumptions of multiple regression are the exact same as simple regression. You just have a lot more graphs that you get to go through. So to find and graph this, it's impossible. We are going into three dimensions, four dimensions, five dimensions, 50 dimensions, however many you want. Um, in which case, it is no longer an X and Y. We now have a Z and it comes out of the screen. And the line is now three-dimensional as well. All of the estimates are the exact same, except the coefficients get a little bit more complicated because they are all interacting with each other. So all parts of the line are now interacting and correlating with each other. To interpret this, we have this example. So anxiety, um, a y-intercept, a slope for depression, plus a slope for self-esteem and error. So self-esteem and depression are predicting anxiety. So beta zero is the predicted anxiety level of a person who has zero depression and zero self-esteem. So if this is zero and this is zero, then that would predict anxiety. So the whole thing is holding everything constant. And I'll tell you right now that it's not realistic for somebody to have zero depression and zero self-esteem because everything is interacting. So beta one right here, this number for depression, this idea, this is the expected change in anxiety based on their depression score. So if we change depression one unit, this is the predicted score of anxiety holding everything else constant. So holding self-esteem constant, holding beta zero, which is a constant, holding everything else constant, 
If I increase depression one unit, then that number is the, is the amount of anxiety that will increase. So this is an additive effect. We can say the same thing for beta two. This is if I increase self-esteem one unit and hold everything else constant, this number is the amount anxiety will increase by one unit of self-esteem increase. Remember, units are incredibly important. Know what you're talking about. The R squared in this case is now a multiple R, meaning it is the taking depression and self-esteem together, how much of anxiety is being explained. This does not mean that we add up the correlation of depression and self-esteem. This is all together, everything interacting. What is my new R squared? So it is how much of anxiety is being explained by the combination of all of our predictors. So multiple regression is a problem solving model. So you can do this a couple different ways. You can throw in all of your variables and go backwards and delete and delete and delete and delete until you have your final model. This is the way I tend to go about it. You can also do stepwise. So you add one variable, See what happens, add another variable, see what happens, add another variable, see what happens until you're satisfied. If you do it right, you'll get the same answer. I prefer to throw everything in and see what happens. When you have a predictor that is not significant, you want to delete it. But you cannot just drop it from, you can't just delete that line in the table and report the original equation. Um, everything changes when you drop one part of your model. Because all of the predictors are interacting with each other, then you have to rerun it because you're going to get different information every single time. If you are not meeting assumptions, so the first thing you do is check assumptions. It is the same for multiple regression. Typically, you delete outliers. Then, of course, you transform a variable. If you're still violating, then you remove that variable from the analysis. You could collect more data if you have that option, or you can get a different variable that's similar in context. So if you were studying anxiety, maybe use a different anxiety test or score. Missing data and outliers. Outliers, delete them. If there are problems, easy. Missing data. Excel has to have full information in order to run regression. You have to have every single thing. So if you have missingness that is on a few observations, so a few of the countries in your data set are missing data, then maybe that country is removed. If your missingness is mostly on one variable, so population, for some reason you don't have information for all the countries, then you would delete population. If you have to, then you consider um, inputting missing values essentially inserting values, and you can talk with me more if you want to go that route. So just to review, the F test is looking at is all of the model significant? As a whole, is this significant? So if ANOVA is not significant, then none of your predictors are either, meaning none of the variance of Y is being explained. If F is significant, then usually one or more of your predictors is significant. It is possible that you could have a significant model and no predictors are significant individually, meaning you have multicollinearity issues and a combination of two of your X values together explain why, but individually don't. Not typical and it's a huge mess if you find it. Review of the t-test. So this is looking at all the parts of the model. So if beta zero is significant, then the y-intercept is needed in the model and is different than zero. If it's not significant, then you don't have to include it in your line. If beta one is significant, then the slope, the relationship of beta one is significantly different than zero and it is a good predictor. If that is not significant, then remove it and rerun your regression. So again, you have a multiple r in your r squared you have your ANOVA test, and if it, the model is significant, 
And then you have all of your T statistics. And are each of these predictors significant? You go through them and you say, nope, yep, yep, nope, and all the way through. And then you have to decide which one do you delete. You delete one at a time. Make small changes because the entire data set is going to change if you change one thing. So maybe you get rid of um, this p-value, so you get rid of model, and you rerun that without this predictor. And then you find out that sedan and coupe is not significant, so you delete and you rerun that one as well. Multicollinearity means that two of your predictors are highly correlated. So if you think back to those circles, that green circle on those two blue circles, that means the overlap between the two blue circles is big enough that it's going to pull the relationship of the whole towards them. That's a problem. So what you want to do is you want to run correlations between all of your independent variables and note anything that is a 0.7 or above. So if you put two variables in, two predictors in your model that are highly correlated to each other, it is going to pull the entire regression line towards it, which is a problem. So you might remove one of them or remove the other one and try a couple different combinations with one or the other. If they're both not significant, great, that's easy. But use one or the other. Don't use them both together. Again, to check, you just run correlations. So it is possible that the F test is significant and none of the predictors is. That is a multicollinear issue. If the F is not significant, do we even look at the T's? In other words, should we always check the model and never mess with the T values? And it really comes down to it depends. If you have strong rationale that each predictor should be significant, then I would check and see how close we are. If you have just thrown in a bunch of stuff just to explore, then I would see that ANOVA is not significant and move on. Steps. So the first thing we want to do is explore descriptives for each individual variable. Then we are going to run the model as a whole. So I recommend throwing in all of the variables, do a huge regression, test all of the assumptions. Here's a hint. If you test the assumption once, then it meets it or it doesn't. And you don't have to check assumptions every single time you modify and move, remove predictors. You want to check for collinearity issues, which you should have done with descriptive. So if you note that two of your predictors are highly correlated to each other, keep an eye on those as you go through. If they're both significant, then remove one and see what happens. Then we go to the tables and we check all of these values. Then we go to the predictors, we check all of these values, and then we start deciding which ones we want to keep and which ones we want to remove. I recommend removing the highest p-value first for your predictors, remove one at a time and rerun every single time until you end up with a model that has the highest R squared value with the most significant predictors. If you keep predictors that are not significant, then you are explaining part of the variance of why, you're explaining part of that green circle, but you're doing it by chance. So we want to include significant predictors with the highest R squared value. And this you just keep playing with until you get the best one. So you're going to run several regressions. Take a minute, review each of these. So you're going to press pause. Make sure that you can answer all of these questions. Thank you.